Praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come together to learn and to grow. And Father, as we go into this teaching on tonight, I pray that you will be glorified as your people are edified in Jesus' name and the devil shall be exposed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so first thing I want to look at is, um, is this. Altars have been mentioned all throughout biblical history. Um, the first mention of altars in the Bible was after, um, after the flood. After the flood where we see um, where Noah, um, Noah was the first person mentioned in Scripture that made an altar. Um, once the, al the ark was settled on the top of the mountain, and the grounds became dry enough um, to live upon. Noah and his family began to transition from the ark to onto dry land. And seeing that the Lord had delivered them from the flood, out of um, out of Noah's gratitude and honor for God, he built an altar to make a sacrifice unto the Lord. Now let's go over to. Um, now just read through this one. Uh, uh, so just get ready, not this one, but get ready for me. Um, Genesis chapter eight. And for some of these, you can go ahead and just write them down and you can go and check them out later just for the sake of time. Cause I got several scriptures I need to touch on. Um, Genesis chapter eight, um, verses 20 through 22, it says, and Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast of, uh, and of every clean fowl. Um, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. <clears throat> and the Lord smelled the sweet, the sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and hot and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now, with this being said, this sacrifice was an art or an act of worship um, and thanksgiving unto God, which came before God as pleasing um, as pleasing. This sacrifice then granted, watch this, a favorable outcome. A favorable outcome. Somebody type that on the screen. A favorable outcome. Now, um, over in Genesis chapter 9, I'm going to need your help, Sister Belinda. Um, Genesis chapter 9, and we're going to go um, from verses 1 through 17. Uh, 1 through 17, and I want to show you something here, even in this experience. Um, Genesis, again, chapter 9, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl and of the air. Upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you even as the green herb have I given you all things but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall ye not eat and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it and at the hand of every at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso sendeth, sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man, and you be ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein the rainbow. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature 
that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you. From all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For perpetual generations, I do set my bow in the cloud, my bow in the cloud. And it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Amen. So as we see here, <clears throat> we mentioned that um, the sacrifice that uh, Noah began to make caused him to get a favorable outcome. He got such a response from God that began to um, give an indication that God was pleased with the sacrifice that Noah had made unto him. Nobody told Noah, you got to make a sacrifice. Nobody told Noah, you need to build an altar. No, it was something that Noah did on his own because he had a heart of gratitude because God had delivered him out of his struggle, had delivered him. Um, whereas the world was taken out, Noah decided, I want to do this and present something unto the Lord to let him know I'm grateful, let him know I'm thankful that you spared our lives. And as a result of this, God began to see the sacrifice. And notice, he didn't do this because he was looking for something in response. He just did it to honor God. And in the midst, God began to respond in favor. And so as a result, now God begins to say, because this has come up before me and it, it is a sweet smell in my nostrils, I'm going to present something to you and watch this it was not just a smell of fragrance of, of a, the sacrifice that was burning it was the fragrance that came forth through the sacrifice from Noah's heart from his heart that's going to be very important to remember um, when it comes down to sacrifice glory to God now we see here um, so here it is. We see that holy, um, that holy altars that are erected are places of worship, honor, and thanksgiving, and yet they are places where you can receive answers from God and access the favor of God. Glory to God. Somebody type the favor of God. So here it is. This reminds me of the story um, of, of Cain and Abel. Reminds me of the story of Cain and Abel and how um, they were the ones to make the first sacrifices mentioned in scriptures. And we begin to see that they sacrificed unto God according to what they had and how they had prospered. So in the midst of this, um, Abel's, uh, Abel presented the best sacrifice that he could of what he owned. And God began to show favor towards Abel. You could bring it to me. And God began to show favor towards Abel. Um, when, however, when Abel's brother, you, glory to God. However, when Abel's brother came, um, uh, Cain offered a sacri his sacrifice. Um, he noticed that. Uh, God favored Abel's offering more than he is. And so he began to ask God, he said, uh, what is it that um, is a, about this, um, his sacrifice that's different than mine? Because we both sacrificing to you, but the problem is 
you show more favor towards him than you are me. And God began to tell him, if you sacrifice the right way, then your offerings will be accepted too. However, your heart is not right because you just gave me just anything. You didn't give me your best. You didn't pick out the finest of the finest. What you did was set aside something that said, God, I'll give you my scraps. God, I'll give you whatever I feel like you deserve, and, 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 and that's going to be it. Now, some of you may be trying to figure out how, what in the world this got to do with an altar. Glory to, it got everything to do with the altar, praise the Lord. So watch this. And so now here it is, Cain gets what? He gets jealous and he goes and kills his brother. He kills his brother Abel. Then what happens now? God comes looking for uh, Cain and say, uh, Cain, where your brother at? And he say, I don't know why you're asking me. Am I supposed to be my brother's keeper? And he say, uh, uh, what have you done? Because your brother's blood, somebody type blood, your brother's blood is crying out from the ground. So that is an indication that there is life in the blood. There's life in your blood. That's going to be very important to understand as we go forth understanding altars. So now with this being said, um, here it is. Abel received, Cain was jealous because Abel received a, a what? favorable outcome because he sacrificed with the right heart and he gave the best that he could offer now watch this it goes on and um and we want to look at this altars throughout the scriptures have been used for many purposes some were offered um some were to um for offerings of worship and honor some were used to present sacrifices of atonement for sins. And some were designed um, to receive answers and experience, watch this, the power and presence of God. The power and the presence of God. Now, in this day and time, altars um, uh, of animal sacrifices are no longer needed as a sign of worship or atonement for sins. Why? Because Christ became the ultimate sacrifice, um, um, the, the ultimate sacrifice, the very atonement for the sins of the world for those um, who would accept the redemption that he offers. Now, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 7 through 8 begins to back this up. And it says, um, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as the lamb to the slaughter, um, as a sheep before the slaughter, uh, before the shearers is dumb. So he opened, openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people he was stricken now watch this the bible also let us know in first peter chapter 1 uh, verses 18 through 21 it says for as um, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things all right remember that you were not redeemed because of corruptible by corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain co um, conversations um, receive it uh, received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as the lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God that raised him from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Now, although Christ has made that this atonement, there, were, there are many around the world that still um, do the practice of sacrifices of animals and various things to shed blood as a result of um, cleansing and atonement of sin and things of this nature. However, we see that we have the ultimate lamb that was slaughtered on our behalf that we don't have to go and do that kind of stuff no more. Glory to God because we are covered by the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Now we go on and we begin to see 
um, that even um, um, throughout the world and these different practices, and especially paganistic ways, and even um, that you will even see even throughout the Old Testament, um, these particular practices still take place even today, depending on the culture and where uh, where you are now. With these things in mind, we must know that Satan is aware of spiritual access and the formula for spiritual power. So Satan, through deceptive works, utilizes similar practices for those who are submitted to him as a way to deceive and lure them into doing his will. Satan will often present this very thing. Uh, he will Satan will often present the very things. Oh Lord, this is good right here. The very things that are within the abundance of your heart, because he is aware of your desires and your will. Mm. He will always try to present the very things that seem to entice you in order to bring about corruption and destruction. But we know that the Bible declares in John chapter 10, verse 10, that Satan um, has, um, as a thief, he comes to do what? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. This can be seen, glory to God, in the story of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, um, verses 8 through 10. And it begins to show us something where um, Jesus, he began to come and try to tempt Jesus um, in the midst of his fasting. And, and this particular, these particular three verses of scripture, it says, Again, the devil taketh him, up, taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world. Why? Watch this, and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will I give thee. Will I give thee? Will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and what? Worship me. Mm. Then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So we see that Satan offered him the splendor of the world by encouraging him to compromise and offer up worship unto him. However, because Jesus understood his assignment, he knew who his father was and who he was in the father, um, what is what the father likes and what he does not like. His aim was to please the father and compromise um, and not to compromise worshiping another. Now, God, um, um, worshiping another God for Jesus, that wasn't enough. That was not an option at all. It was not an option to compromise. It was not an option to try to find his way to get to something great through another route through other means so he understood that my purpose is locked up in God and so it is God that has to move for me and has to make things happen for me in his time all right so with this being said let's move um it says glory to God this is what um we see uh, this is what we see with many people um, within paganistic worships and occultic practices in today's society. Many do not have a clear understanding of their God-given purpose, so they end up pursuing Satan um, and what he has to offer deceptively uh, as a way to try to bribe them or try to lure them in and make it seem like I'm going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you ask me for. But it's, it's something attached to this, but I ain't going to tell you that something's in the fine print. Glory to God. <clears throat> now, watch this. With this being said, many have erected altars in the name of their gods, which other gods are generally uh, referred to as demonic spirits or sometimes referred to as people, living people or people that have died on that people have chosen to worship as their God. Now, this is a clever way of glorifying Satan because his ultimate agenda is to draw people's attention away from God, his will and purpose for their lives. And he does this to steer people in the direction of power that is corrupt. 
Now, on this table, you see something. Um, I set up a form of an altar. And here, you see on each side, this is a two-sided altar. You see this side would be your holy side, and then this side would be your wicked side. And, but in the middle of this altar, what's amazing is there are two signs that are here. And one of the signs says, danger, keep out. Beware, go back. Lord, have mercy. But notice at the bottom of the signs, there are two eyes that are uh, glaring at you. Glory to God. And these two eyes, you know, notice there's no body that is shown. But you see the eyes, but you don't see a body. Now, watch this. Um, likewise, uh, with these warning signs, you got to understand the word of God are just like these signs. The word of God are just like these signs. They're warning you to stay away from this. Warning you to leave these occultic works of darkness alone. Because what you don't see is the full agenda behind the warning. Lord have mercy. In other words, you don't see the full agenda of Satan when you enter into this place that the word of God was trying to keep you out of. Hmm. Okay, now let's move. God begins to describe these practices um, as, being, um, as to make one defiled, which is to pollute, glory to God, which is to pollute or to make unclean. Whether you practice them, watch this, or whether you pursue them. In other words, whether you are a practicing witch or you are a practicing warlock, wizard, whatever you want to be, um, whoever you are to try to create an altar. And even if you say, you know what, I just created an altar one time, you know, because I just wanted to get back at my coworker. Then what tends to happen is you, you now submit yourself to become a witch or a warlock. Lord have mercy. Because now you are conjuring up powers that do not belong to God. Because now you're trying to carry out a mission for something evil. Oh, that mercy. Uh oh, watch this. Uh, so Belinda, I'm not even going to just talk about something evil. Let's, let's look at the fact that some people just want love. They're looking for love. And so I want the witch to, to, to create some kind of potion or create some kind of magical spell that can now work in my favor to get this guy that ain't paying no attention to me to like it. Oh, Lord. To get this woman over here that I, I'm so attracted to, and, 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 and it's just like, I, I, I don't know, she just I, I just, I don't think I'm good enough for her. Can you work something so that she can be attracted to me now? So in you doing this, whether you perform the works or you pursue someone to do the works for you, you now come in covenant or you now come into uh, uh, alignment with the demonic kingdom. Your name goes onto a demonic roster, a demonic hit list, that it does not matter whether the works was for you or for somebody else, the devil is going to now come after you in one way or another. That's that fine print. Glory to God. So now watch this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, it says, and I got to hurry up, um, regard not them that have a familiar spirit, a demon that is very familiar with your life. Neither seek after wizards um, to defile, be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Then it goes on um, familiar spirits as I have defined here. I don't want to get too caught up into a lot of definitions tonight. Um, familiar spirits um, are demonic spirits that are familiar with everything that takes place in our lives as well as familiar um, for, um, familiar with experiences also um, are assigned to wizards and witches and warlocks, sorcerers, etc. They are assigned to them to help them in their work. Now, a wizard is considered by the definition of this verse of scripture as a knowing one or a conjurer. They are ones that are very skilled and knowledgeable in the art of spell casting and conjuring spirits. Now, Leviticus chapter 20, I'm, I'm trying to run, y'all, I'm sorry. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 6 through 
um, through 7, it says, And the soul that turneth after um, such as have, uh, have a familiar spirit and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my, fa set, uh, uh, set my face against that soul, and I will cut him off from among his people. Then it goes on to say, sanctify yourselves, clean yourselves up. Bring yourself into a holy state of being. Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I, the Lord, I am the Lord your God. So just like the signs that you notice um, on this table, God is giving you a warning to steer clear of these types of functions. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 through 11 it says uh, when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations there shall not be found among you um, anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire um, or that useth divination or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or another, um, or a um, a wizard, or a necromancer, which is one that conjures or commun tries to communicate with the dead. Um, oftentimes, these uh, those who function in these types of forms of demonic practices um, often use their craft for self gain to carry out personal agendas, whether good or evil, to perform rituals that will benefit others or assist others in their agenda regarding their own lives or often others' lives, whether for good or for evil. Don't this sound familiar? Um, when oftentimes you will see, <clears throat> and sometimes it will even be um, um, <coughs> uh, people, you have celebrities that work with witches, and sometimes, um, um, not even just working with witches, but you have celebrities that have encounters with de these demonic spirits that will grant them, just like Satan did for Jesus, begin to offer them, I'll get what you want, what you, what you want, what you need done. You know, I, I give you this, but you're going to have to give me something. But the truth of the matter is, um, some of these artists and some of these people, they will tell you after they have experienced, you see, they don't try to show you what's really going on. But if you was to really sit down and have an interview with some of them, like some have come forth and confessed, you know, I've been miserable ever since I did it. You know, I'm, I'm constantly um, battling with anxiety, constantly battling with depression. I'm not happy. I'm just putting on a front so I can do my performance. Lord have mercy. So, here it is. Let me move quickly. I'm almost done. I'm going to try to wrap this up as fast as possible. So oftentimes uh, <clears throat> you will see these practices um, for these various reasons. But the Bible begins to speak <clears throat> against such things such as witchcraft um, and wickedness of the flesh and your own lustful desires. Why? Um, it tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, cleanliness, um, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, uh, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, em emulations, uh, wrath, strife, uh, seditions, heresies, Envy, murder, drunkenness, rev um, reveling, um, and the such of the like. And of the which I tell, tell you before, as I have told you um, in time past, that they which do, these thing, um, do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So with these things in mind, we realize that God does not want us to connect with any ways of wickedness. And oftentimes, the reason why people are going to witches or performing witchcraft is because they have a selfish or fleshly agenda. I don't like you, so I'm going to do something to take care of you. They call it fixing you. <laughs> I'm going to fix you. Okay, I want you to fix this person for me. And so, so in, in, in all of this, what happens is when you generally come, and, I, and I'm probably coming up to it, when you come before witches, um, they generally require of you a fee. Why? Because in order for me to do something for you, it's going to require what? A sacrifice. 
Ooh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why do you, don't you notice that a lot of psychics and, and mediums and different things, uh, um, they often charge, unless you just got you in good with them, they're going to charge you. They're going to tax you real good because they're going to get their money. Glory to God. Because guess what? One thing you got to also realize is on the flip side of that, there is something they have to do to get to that level of power. There are some that are born um, um, and demons are automatically attracted to them and they start introducing them at a young age. So little Billy starts seeing little dead people walk around the house and because you don't know no better to tell little Billy these are really demons taking on the faces of people, you know, uh, we just call them a medium. Mm -hmm. And so they start tapping into what they call a gift, which is really a demonic power, you know, and start trying to trying to cultivate that thing. And so now that demon grows with him and he becomes very powerful in it because of the power that's in him, which is the demonic spirit, the demonic powers. So now, likewise, when you have witches practicing witches and warlocks and, um, and, and, and sorcerers and all this kind of stuff, what they tend to do now is in order to get to a certain level of power or ranking in their kingdom they have to make a sacrifice they got to make a sacrifice so according to what deity they are trying to call which is another form of God or if you're not talking about the most high God you're generally referring to again demons so with this being said they tend to Locate whatever God they want to make a sacrifice to, whatever devil they want to make a sacrifice to, and now they start to summons that devil. But that devil, in order to give them the power or aid them in the works that they do to perform their witchcraft, that witch now has to make a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is determined on the level of power you want. Oh, Lord. So here it is. Isn't it funny that we have moved out of blood sacrifices and all that kind of stuff because we covered by the blood, but the devil will keep you so ignorantly locked into the past and to the rituals of old school. Oh, Lord. He'll keep you locked up in tradition and have your mind still stuck in a way that God say, I called you out of that. So now here it is. These witches now have to make blood sacrifices. They have to do crazy things, and, and it's almost just like when you go into a, a, a sorority or a fraternity, they, uh, they have this hazing process where they'll make you do some crazy stuff sometimes and some stuff that they don't want the public to know about, but you got to keep your mouth closed and you just got to do it because if you want to be a part of this club, you're going to have to make a sacrifice. We want to see your commitment to us. And likewise, before any sorority or any fraternity started doing it, the demonic kingdom started it first. Oh, Lord. So now I want power. I want to be able to have a powerful altar because what happens is a, the altar is a place of connection of power. It's a connection of power and a place to get answers. So now here it is. Watch this. I begin to, uh, uh, you, you got to understand that these people begin to make blood sacrifices. So sometimes they got to sacrifice animals. Sometimes they got to be able um, to destroy certain things. Watch this. And sometimes they even have to kill. If they want certain powers or certain things to be accomplished, they're going to have to kill some people. And sometimes it's going to be the very people they don't want to kill. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. See, people, people don't hear about this stuff. They don't hear about the bloody side. Of, of, of the sacrifice what happened to Abel again God say what I hear his blood crying out from the ground why is it something to do with blood because there's life in the blood and so if you can exchange life I will give you power mm. Lord Jesus so let me move I need to hurry up glory to God Sister Cara. I'm finna wrap it up glory to God so now watch this um because this, this kind of teaching and stuff can go on, but I'm giving you the gist of what you really need to know. Glory to God. So after um, altars have been a symbol of power, spiritual con um, contact for centuries, but not all altars are good, as we see. You have altars of God, and you have altars to devils. Now, altars... Um, you have um, altars that are erected unto God 
and altars unto devils. So on this side, oftentimes you will see these are just some symbolic items. Um, you see here a, ble a breastplate and um, a helmet, which is a symbol of spiritual warfare. So sometimes, oftentimes what prophets will do that have altars or a, a certain place that they go to pray or even um, any spiritual leaders. And watch this, not just them, but even believers. Believers can have a, a, a holy altar as well. You can literally create an altar unto the Lord where you go as a place of worship, go to a, as a meeting place where God can meet you. He can respond to you and so on and so forth. However, that's a whole nother topic. Um, teaching about erecting altars and all that kind of stuff. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother time. So this is a symbol of spiritual warfare. So sometimes when I need a, a, matter, a matter handle, I go to my altar and I begin to cry out to God and I begin to war in the realm of the spirit. But guess what? I can't war without the wisdom of warfare which comes in the word of God. Oh Lord. I got to know how to maneuver spiritually. So I need the word. To tell me and lead and guide me in the way that I should go. And so therefore at my altar, oftentimes I will keep my word because sometimes God wants to reveal things to me. Sometimes he wants to give an answer to me. Sometimes it's coming through the word and not by audible voice. It's not going to always come through visions and dreams. Sometimes it's going to come through the word. Glory to God. Because guess what? After you have a vision or dream, now you got to base it according to the word to make sure it don't go out of, out of context or out of alignment with the scriptures. Because God don't contradict himself. I don't care how much you say God said. If, if it don't line up with the word, uh, saint, that, don't, that, that contradicts. That's a contradiction. So therefore, God didn't tell you that. Hello, somebody. So then you watch this. You got a symbol of an angel here. That as I'm doing warfare and as I'm crying out to God, the angels of the Lord are moving on my behalf. Glory to God. They're going to work for me. Well, the demonic altar, they got demons working for them. But guess what? We got angels. We got God. We got the Holy Spirit moving on our behalf. Lord have mercy. And watch this. Also, the holy altars are a place that oftentimes you will see prophets um, bringing prayer requests, uh, uh, bringing prayer requests request from the people or presenting prayers before the Lord bringing prayers and offering prayers before the Lord because God I need you to move on behalf of sister so and so I need you to move on behalf of this matter I need you to turn this around and so they begin to labor over the altar and they watch this they make a sacrifice of worship they make a sacrifice of praise sometimes they even have to sacrifice in fasting and prayer oh Lord so now watch this. Oftentimes also you will find other holy items such um, some people. This is a supernatural cloth. I don't generally use a, a prayer shawl, um, but there's nothing wrong for those who use it. As long as you really know what you're doing and understand the history of it, what it's for and how to use it, then by all means do what you do. Praise God. But me personally, I don't use a prayer shawl, but I do have a supernatural cloth that I use as an extension, almost like that of a mantle, according to what we taught the other the week in scripture and so sometimes um, we will bring our, our uh, holy um, um, items with us some people will come to their altar with their prayer shawls sometimes you will lay your garments or different things on the altar so that you can bring them before God so he can anoint them or begin to impart um, uh, his power his wisdom into you for certain things amen and so now with that being said, these are examples. Watch this. I also have my oil here. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Because we'll slay some devils. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. But guess what? This same oil can be the same thing that's used, not just to slay devils, but to release blessings, to release favor. Glory to God. God will begin to breathe upon the oil, begin to touch the oil that you can have. Watch this. A favorable outcome. But then when you come over to the demonic side, ooh, I'm ready. Glory to God. Come on, Sister Belinda. Stand right here. I'm going to use you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But when I come over to the demonic altar, glory to God, just wait right there. Um, when I come over to the demonic altar, the demonic side, oftentimes they tend to use a lot of items and different things. And I have even heard this recently. How is it that Christianity, Christianity can talk down about um, uh, witch altars and witchcraft when y'all do similar stuff? Well, the thing about it is our practices are unto one holy God, but your practices are unto an unclean devil. Oh, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. And when you do it, you are made unclean. But when we do it, it makes us holy. Oh, I can't get no help. Glory to God. It makes us holy. Glory to God. So watch this. So now, Sister Belinda comes. Stand right here. Face the people. So Sister Belinda, she comes and, and she's pursuing the witch and saying, well, I like um, this guy named Jeffrey and uh, he ain't paying me no attention. So, you know, uh, I noticed the other week, um, I like him, but, but the other week I noticed that he had a fiance all of a sudden. So I need you to do something to work against them and break this up. So now the demon goes out and begins to work. So she done paid her money. Now the witch begins to do all they gonna do. And all of a sudden, now the demon goes and tries to cause interference in that. Mm. So sometimes a witch will require for you to bring something to them that belongs to the person. But then sometimes, guess what they'll do? Oh, Lord. They will put your name on the altar. So Sister Belinda now, she want Jeffrey to like her. So Sister Belinda goes and she speaks with the witch and the witch does what they do. They do their craft. But guess what? What Sister Belinda don't realize is not only will the demons now chase after Jeffrey, the demons come and chase after her. So now Sister Belinda don't know she bound to the demonic kingdom. And now she thinks everything's well. But all of a sudden, here it is, six months down the road, Sister Belinda got cancer. Three years later, all of a sudden, Sister Belinda had a heart attack and a stroke at the same time. And now her whole face is distorted. Glory to God. Just distort your face a little bit. <laughs> her whole face is distorted. And she don't know what happened. She just thought it was a medical situation. All of a sudden, Sister Belinda going to the doctor and saying, I'm having pains in my side, and I don't know what's going on. And now all of a sudden, the doctors are looking, and they can't find nothing wrong. Why? Because you thought you was getting away with just doing something outward. But no, 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 no. Demons are going to require something of you. Glory to God. Now, thank you. I'm going to show you something else. So, Sister Belinda now, watch this. Sister Belinda, you sit on the front row right there in front of the camera. Sister Belinda, I got a problem with Sister Belinda from a distance. She's my coworker. I got an issue with her, and I don't like how she's excelling, and I don't want her to get a promotion. So, I'm going to go to my altar, and I'm going to Belinda's name on my altar and I'm going to summons a spirit that I work with to now attack Belinda now watch this so Belinda put your hands in there now Belinda becomes in bondage because of what I sent out and I think I'm good but do you not think that demons not do the same thing to witches as they will do for the person pursuing things to be done? They, it can happen for them too. However, what demons will sometimes do is they will prolong. They will prolong their effects on the witch because they're good for business. So I'll preserve you a little longer so you can keep doing what you're doing but at the end, you're so deceived and you're so blinded to the point where as, as a witch, you don't realize you're going straight to hell. You're going straight to hell. We got your soul so bound, we taking you down with us. When we burn, you're going to burn too. <laughs> oh, God. So now Sister Belinda is here. Stand up, Sister Belinda. And see, they got all their little works and stuff. They got their little bones and all kind of stuff set up. Because they're they, they good at their craft. Watch this. Now Sister Belinda comes. And Sister Belinda, lift your hands up. Sister Belinda comes and she's trying to get free. She's trying to get free. So she comes for prayer. Watch this. 
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you'll cause her to get the promotion in Jesus' name. Guess what? It don't work because she's still bound. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now that you will cause overflow in her life and money keep dropping out of hand. Why? Because she's still bound. She's bound by the curse of a witch. Oh, Lord. So now what tends to happen is we come in. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And we start performing deliverance. deliverance on sister Belinda now boom the demons start manifesting and now we start finding out wait a minute there's a connection to witchcraft oh lord now either a demon will manifest or you will spit up whatever they have done or whatever poisons that the demonic spirit has put in your body or in that um in that deliverance process something will happen that you will get released from the assignment but the assignment of witchcraft has to be targeted so that it can be destroyed if you do not attack it it will not be dealt she'll still be bound you be walking out crying to me I, got, I feel the presence of God all over me but you're still bound when the presence lifts you're still like this so you have to attack the works of darkness that are binding the person so now I command every spirit to loose its hold off of her life. I command you every wicked altar that she's been tied to and every altar that is bearing her name, you got to loose her. Now watch this. Watch this. So now in the spirit, what we do oftentimes in deliverance is uh, um, as a prophet, sometimes I will literally, if it's witchcraft, in, witchcraft involved, slide over for a little bit for me. Um, so if witchcraft is involved, then what tends to happen now is now I come into the rim of the spirit. I don't go physically to the witch's house. I go in the rim of the spirit and summons the angels of the Lord to now go to the witch's house to locate the altar. They locate the altar, and once they have located the altar, I give the angels instructions to either bring the altar in the spirit and place it before me physically in the deliverance session, or I will instruct them to break it down and destroy it in the realm of the spirit. So watch this. So oftentimes, and if you have followed me in deliverance, you will notice that I have done this many times. The altar is now brought in before, before me. So watch this. Now, we command the altar to be destroyed by the fire of God. We break the altar down. We remove, watch this, and we command Sister Belinda's name or we command the demon to remove her name off of the altar. Now, oftentimes, there are times in deliverance where a witch will begin to be summoned spiritually and begin to speak out almost like a uh, ventriloquist. Whereas the demon that is functioning, the, uh, the spirit of Python or, 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 or the, um, uh, the spirit of divination or whatever is functioning at that time will be the main operating spirit speaking out. But through that spirit, now the witch, wherever they are, begins to communicate through the power of the snake. So in the midst of this, now whatever you do, the witch experiences where they are. So now we command the witch to remove their name off the altar or we will summons for the name to come off of the altar and that their name be cleared so now watch this I can lose you why because of everything that had a hold on you is no longer attached so in the midst of this now we we lose you from this and we deal with the power of the witch the Bible says suffer not a witch to live that don't necessarily mean in these days. Now, back in the Old Testament, they stone you to death and kill you. Take you right on out here. In these days and times, because of grace, we offer and extend for an opportunity for the witch to repent. If they do not have a true repentant heart and turn their life over to the Lord Jesus, then what tends to happen now is we deal and destroy you, but we destroy you through your altar. So we bind your works, destroy your altars that it will no longer be able to bear power to affect again. Oh, that means now you got to start all over if you're going to do it. 
And sometimes you will even, um, sometimes depending on the leading of the Holy Spirit through each prophet or whoever is delivered, the deliverance minister, sometimes they will even um, deal with the witch or they will um, uh, smite the witch with something. They may um, send blindness to them. They may send a crippling to them or different things. And sometimes depending on how wicked they are and depending on what has taken place, sometimes they will even um, issue a death sentence, a physical death sentence. So it just depends on what's, what's happening, what's taking place. And so as a result, you have these different methods. And this is just to give you some short, the shortest way I can give it. Um, so understanding of an altar. Now, thank you. Um, real quickly, and I'm done. Um, um, just to let you know, uh, when it comes down to <coughs> which altars, um, I don't advise just any and everybody to go and start targeting a witch's altar. Oh, we destroy the witch's altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we target your altar now, witch, and we strip you of your... No, no, no. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let, me, let me help you. Let me help you a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. Because some of y'all be trying to act all deep and wonderful and so, so, so empowered. But you try to, try to go after them, them high-ranking devils. You trying to go out the principalities and, and all these other high-ranking devils and you ain't even mastered the little ones around you. Oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You 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 you're trying to trying to aim for something. You gotta realize that witches that operate in high levels of power like that, you don't just run up on them and you and you 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 not even confident in the power that's in you. You don't, you don't just go trying to target no which altar and, and think you're going to destroy something just because you got the name of Jesus and I know who I am. No, no, no. Get your power up. Get your power up, sis. Get your power up, bro. Get it up because you cannot go into that type of warfare because them witches will fight you back. Them witches will astral project in the middle of the night and come and terrorize you physically in your home and you won't see not a person in sight. They will manhandle you. They will leave scratch marks on your body and you waking up trying to figure out where these scratches come from. They will attack you if you are not, if I'm telling you, if you're going to be fearful, don't try it. You better go to somebody that can help you. Glory to God. If you are fearful, if you are a person that's going to be easily intimidated, if you are a person that's going to run up on a witch and then back down the moment they bark at you, don't, don't try that. <laughs> don't, don't try that. You better know what you're doing before you go running up on witchcraft. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, I, I know a lot of people just thought that, oh, I could just, I could just come against those works. No, just because you say I bind up a witch's altar, I bind up their curses, that don't mean that it's gone. You got to have wisdom with that. You got to understand exactly what you're doing, understand spiritual authority, and make sure you got confident in that authority that you're trying to use. Because guess what? You'll find yourself wound up just like the, the Skeever brothers. Go research them. You'll find out. They was going around, called themselves casting out devils. And guess what? They ran up on one devil. And that devil say, uh, Jesus I know. Paul I know. Or who was it? Peter. I know. Well, who are you? And it, it intimidated them. And guess what? That one devil, that one per that devil that was in that one person tore all their behinds up. They all left bruised, scarred, Bleeding, hurt, their clothes was ripped off. He jumped all of them. Had them lipping and running away. So if you're not careful, you better know what you're dealing with. Don't just go running up on no witchcraft and run, running up on no, no altars and you don't know what you're doing. Because if you don't have no wisdom, don't be calling me in the middle of no warfare time as a prophet. I, I, can't, I can't breathe. What you was doing? I was trying to choke the witch and they choking me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I'm done, y'all. But you, you got you gotta use wisdom. Glory to God. You gotta use wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. And once you have the knowledge and you understand how to maneuver in the spirit and deal with certain things, 
You know, because one thing about it is a witch cannot stand for you to mess with the altar. An altar, and, and likewise, even a holy altar, don't nobody, you better not touch nobody altar. Tell my, ooh, that's cute. You better leave that alone. That's why I, I, I taught us uh, a message uh, when we did the uh, mantles and the power of sacred things back in 2021. I told you, stop letting people touch your prayer shawl and, and all your sacred items. Tell me, ooh, can I just say, ooh, that feel nice. That is not supposed to be an item that you letting people just have easy access to. It is not a toy. Stop playing with people's altars. Stop playing with people's prayer shawls. Stop playing with people's sacred items. Leave it alone. Don't you touch my oil. Unless I give you permission, leave my stuff alone. And I bet not catch you playing with my, my supernatural cloth. Oh, glory. It's only certain people that have access to touch my stuff. Glory to God. Because it's sacred. Whenever you allow just anybody to handle your stuff, it is not sacred. Because it is supposed to be something dedicated unto God between you and God. And God will use. But if you letting everybody touch it, every hand get a hold of it, I don't know what you got on you. I don't need you transferring nothing. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Sister Carl. Let me, glory to God. So, like I say, I just want you to be encouraged to know, <clears throat> you know, you can deal with things in your life. And Sister Carl, she's going to deal with curses and all that kind of stuff and tell you how to deal with that kind of stuff. Glory to God. But you got to realize that this is why so many people, will literally sit around and say, God, I bind this and I bind that. And they come out and still struggling with the same thing because you got to get to the root of the problem. And if the root is witchcraft, there is a certain way that you have to approach and deal. Glory to God. Because you just saying, I bind witchcraft, that does not necessarily mean that witchcraft is stopped. Hello. Now, there is power in what you declare as a believer and out of your authority in Christ. You can speak something. That's why when we command demons to go out, they have to respond. Because it's the authority through the name. However, you got to realize that there's a wisdom with everything. Amen.